screen. What's up, Technology family? Welcome back to another episode of the Technology News Talk. It's your boy, the host with the most, uh, the head of the table, the king of the Technology empire, with my lovely co-host with the most, Ty. What's up, my girl? <laughs> What's up, my boy? <laughs> it's good. How you doing? Happy Friday. Oh, yeah. It's definitely happy Friday. Um, we still in the spring, but um, summer is just round the corner. It must be feeling hot in Florida because it's still chilly up here in Georgia. Uh, we have our days where we still got to bundle up. So, Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, Atlanta um, and Florida has their days. One minute um, it's hot outside. One minute it's raining, but um, it is what it is. Yes, it is exactly real. Yes, yes. I hear, look, I'll tell you in Georgia, this is what I learned. Because, you know, from being from Florida, all you need is sunglasses and, like, be heat ready, right? In Georgia, you need sunglasses, flip flops, a raincoat. Um, you need rain gear. You need ice stuff for the snow to get off your windshield. You need to be protected year round because you really don't know what's going to come at you. You really don't. Exactly. But um, uh, let's get into our first topic for today. So um, last week, that Mortal Kombat movie came out last week. So I'm going to give my honest opinion as a fan, and also as a movie critic. So, I'm going to say this. It wasn't, it wasn't that perfect, but it wasn't trash. It was, like, it was, it was, really, it was really good from a, um, from a video game movie uh, perspective. Like, if someone's going to tell me to do, like, a tier rate list, I will put it, like, second below uh, towards the very first one that came out in 1995. Yeah, I will put that in a second, and then the, the nineteen five one will be the very first one because uh, most of that, most of us, uh, that's all we um, we grew up with, and we're not going to mention uh, the second movie because uh, it was an abomination against humanity. But we still oh. uh, no, uh, normal days when we have like a rainy day or uh, something like that, where uh, we we feel like a guilty pleasure to watch the second movie. But um, it was a new um. There was there was um in the original um they wanted to do a third one but it's been in de de development of hell so that's why we got the reboot one so I will say and I'll say this from a, a film critic perspective I like that James Wan came in to to produce it but you had a first time director on this and a first time writer on this but they didn't they didn't do that bad but there was some some mistakes in the movie that I can really tell. So, for example, uh, the fight scenes. Like, I like me some good fight scenes that like in more uh, whatever it's an action movie or martial arts movie. But the only thing I hate about it is the editing. Like, there was one minute um, when they was doing the practice fights, uh, uh, they was like cut, 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 cut. No, that's just too much. Like, if you want to see like a real good fight scene. With uh, with good cinematography and good editing, I recommend you guys check out the raid. So if you look at those fight scenes, you can literally tell that's more combat. Like they they should have took that knowledge from the raid into uh, into this one. So like, but the not saying the the fights were bad. Uh, like the fights were were terrific. It's just the way it was edited. Like it, that that was just that was just too much. Okay. But and, and um, so we also had ten fatalities in this movie with uh, Kano ripping out uh, a re reptile's heart, um, Bihan on Hanzo, yeah, with at the very at the very first movie, uh, at the very first um, sorry, said seven minutes of the movie of the opening scene. Then you had Kung Lao did his um his hat thing on Nateria, and then Cole on Goro. Shane Su taking a uh, Kung Lao soul. Um, Jax with the sm smash of the head on Raiko. Um, Sonya on Kano. And Kane's dragon fatality on Cabal. And then Sonya on Melina. And then a uh, Tootsie! The scorpion on uh, Sub Zero. And then, so, and then, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, and technically, the first fight was um, 
I don't know if they gonna actually call it the uh, the first fight, but the first, but the very first fight was um was Sub Zero um uh, versus Jax, where Jax had lost his arms, uh, of course. But um, but I'm gonna say this: like the very first um the very first seven minutes of that film, I feel like there was a different crew shot that those particular scenes, and then you had the regular crew filming out the the, the rest of the rest of the movie. That's how I feel like that. <laughs> that no, uh, to be honest, that was a very good um, uh, seven minutes opening of that scene. That was that was really good. I really liked it that. Like that was that was literally perfect. And um, not that's it. Uh, so if you if you would if anyone would tell me to like to rate this movie from a fan and from a um, movie critics perspective, I'll give it a um, a seven out of ten because it wasn't that bad. Like I said, it wasn't trash and it wasn't that perfect. So and with the um the day-to-day thing with it in theaters and on HBO Max, it made more money than what Wonder Woman 1984, what Godzilla vs. Kong did. And that was very surprising. And not only that, um, it made a lot of money uh for a radio art film and uh, like during like during the pandemic. So that's something that uh, Mortal Kombat should definitely like um, give itself a, uh, a pat on the back for that one because they did really good. Because if you think about it, like with that type of uh, with that type of money, uh, they did end up in the box office. You can already tell they're gonna make another sequel. And speaking of that, there's three more movies like uh, in the works. So if the fans want more, they're gonna definitely uh, uh, get some more. So um, Ty, what are your thoughts on on the movie? Like giving your Fan and movie critic uh, thoughts uh, on the movie, and what you uh, expect to see in um, in the sequels. Listen, okay, so let's start with uh, what did I expect in the sequels? I wish there was a sequel because that's exactly what happened. They just started the movie, all oh, high action and everything. Everything was going good. I think even the story's going all right. The fight started to fall off. The first fight wasn't that edited all kind of weird and stuff. Um, I like the story, you know, like <clears throat> every character was a little branched off than the previous movie, right? Where we didn't, we had Kano, but it was different, right? Uh, we had Luke, uh, Luke Cage, Luke Cage, yeah. Luke Cage, yeah, Luke Cage, right? Luke Cage, right. And he wasn't the the protagonist in the movie. You know who I thought that was the protagonist? And I think what happened was, it's Kano. Kano was really good in this movie. He reminded me of Banshee. He reminded me of the boys, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, or that action hero, you know what I'm saying? And for him to have Sonya and she could have killed somebody else. I mean, she could have actually killed like Katana because the Katana in this movie, was it with the one with the face? She that's was black. That's Melina. Melina? Yeah. She, she, she black. The, the, the mouth and um, yeah, we didn't actually see Katana in this movie, but I think probably, probably gonna see it in the sequel. Probably it better be a sequel because okay I, am, I i felt yes i left i felt um left off at the end um i i i, I like i said i love kano in this movie uh first time director first time director um i think they did an excellent job um with staying video game based to the um be video game um uh, tied to the movie, you know, because I think we saw some characters in there we didn't see in the last movie. We saw. Um, in the video game, like the guy with the box head with the eyes. Oh my god, I gotta learn these names. Jesus, <laughs> I don't know names about nothing. <laughs> this is the worst. So him, he was in the video game. So I was like, okay, cool, cool. So I, I really, uh, I like that. So. Um, I liked um I liked Sonia in this movie too. Um I think she looked natural, she, you know, I think she fought good. Um I think uh it had a lot of good characters and I like the storyline where he they they're starting to get trained and man, they could have been a good A team. I think Kano fell off for me. They you know what is they're probably gonna bring them back. They're gonna bring them back. I'll write to them. They, they probably don't do that. <laughs> Um, I would give the overall movie a six point three. Mm, uh, not bad at all. Yeah. But um, that's uh, 
if you think about it, um, with the storyline, like even though like the screenplay was a little off or so, but like you can tell like the storyline was focused on more towards Scorpion and um and Sub Zero. So like oh like this is the point that um that all of Radiant's uh, chosen champions are there to like to to bring uh, Hanzo, which is Scorpion's bloodline, to fruition. So that's why Cole was brought in to like to, to the champions because you know he has some sort of like background towards the um towards Hanzo and the rest of the the Shire Ryu clan and uh, in the uh, in the beginning of uh, in the beginning of the movie and then also you have you had Jazz coming in you had Sonya coming in and for Luke Kane like even though back in 95's uh uh the Mortal Kombat like um Luke Kane was supposed to be like the chosen champion for Mortal Kombat but like for this movie he was kind of more of the pr protector of Earthrealm yeah he was kind of more of the protector and so is um uh, Kung Lao in the movie and then also like Kano, he kind of played the role of how I give it a good example from from Spider Man um, uh, Far From Home like like Mysterio like he was a good uh, good guy at first but then the, towards like the uh, in like in the second act or close to, to the to the climax like uh, you know he's gonna be a bad guy like when I first saw the trailers I'm like hold up. Kano's a good guy in this movie. Uh, uh, that don't sound right. Like mm -hmm. I knew he was gonna betray them at some point because like when he had that face to face with in the movie of the with Kabob, like you know that 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 was potentially a betrayal that was gonna happen like some at some point in um in the movie. But um I will say Kano was the funniest um in the movie at times. Like he was a uh, um kind of like the best thing um in the movie. And then um, when he had the argument with um. Well, Kung Lao, that's when, um, well, first he had a, um, he got a scar from, from Reptile at first. And then when he had the argument and, uh, with Kung Lao, that's when he had his, um, his beam power. And then, um, and then uh, when Sonya killed uh, Kano in one of the fights, that's when um, Sonya had her, her, dra her had her uh, dragon mark uh, stripes uh, because she didn't have it like in, a, um, in the entire movie. But um, she finally had her Dragon Marquis uh, uh, strikes, and then uh, that's when she started having her powers too. So, yeah, so that that's why Raiden uh, came to to Cole, to Jats, and I um, mean everyone, anyone who has the Dragon Marquis has been chosen for for the, to fight for to fight for Earth Realm against Outworld's um, fighters, which is um, leading by Shane Soon and. Obviously, Melina was uh, Shane Su's number one assassin, and then um, and then Sub Zero was Shane Su's chosen one, and then also you had Kebab and uh, and Reiko, um, in, in the movie. Now, if you think about it, um, even though they mentioned the tournament most of the times in the movie, but we didn't really had a tournament in the movie. That like there was mentioned like uh, when they was talking about the history of Mortal Kombat. Oh, like this uh, back in the history days, it was a great, a great tournament. Like Outworld has been on top for so long against uh, against Earth Realm, but now this is a time for Earth Realm uh, to, to to bring balance back into into Mortal Kombat and onto the uh, into over uh, to the rest of the realms in um in the world. So um so yeah, the the it was just basically Earth Realm versus Outworld in the battle of the supremacy. If you think about it. Mm -hmm. that's what i did that i'm not gonna like you did, like you said that's one thing i did like about the whole idea like it had more the 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 outer realm had a little bit more depth you know what i'm saying like you get it you know you're like i think someone who watched this for the first time would say just hey there was there is a an earth realm and there's a dark realm and the mortal Kombat realm <laughs> and you totally understand it like off that and i was like i kind of like that it was just simple there was nothing like i, I think they i just want them to have more stories they can do this i just i, I like that <laughs> yeah and there was a couple of characters they mentioned um well you kind of saw like a, a how i say it, Ed, like in the movie like we saw a night wolf in the um when they were explaining the history of mortal Kombat, we saw a night wolf and then also we saw the statue of Shao Kahn. And we, so that kind of give us um, a little hint 
then it might be in the second one. And then of course, like at the towards the end credits, Johnny Cage. Oh, sad ass. He's like, I don't remember the power. I don't remember. You know, get it. You know, I can't find. I was like, damn, that's his hope. <laughs> yeah, I felt that. <laughs> Wait, one. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, uh, like I said, so Ty gave it a, uh, a six. I gave it a seven. So, but um, that's our review on Mortal Kombat. So let us know in the comment section below. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, let us know what are your thoughts on, on yeah. the movie. And, uh, yeah, share your thoughts on that. Yeah, but, uh, yeah go ahead. Exactly. So uh, moving on to our next topic. So uh, last uh, last Sunday was the uh, was the Oscars. Um, wasn't that exciting for this Oscars like due to like the, 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 the pandemic uh, situation, but uh, it was all right, but um, so uh, like we mentioned before, uh, Mank had ten nominations, but Nomadland took uh, uh, all mostly won most of the awards, uh, taking uh, like three um, three category awards, and then winning, including winning best picture. And then so uh, let's talk about the uh, the situation. So uh, originally in every Oscars. They know we put the uh, the best picture nomination last, but the, but this year, it didn't go last. It gained like, like, right at the best picture that they, they nominate. Uh, they put out best actor and best actress uh, um last. But um, everybody was like rooting for um, for Chadwick Boseman to win uh best actor, but it went to uh to Anthony Hopkins in um in the movie The Father. So um, a lot of people say uh, that Chadwick was snubbed from the Oscars. Uh, like, do you do you believe that in your opinion? Uh, yes. Like, uh, I haven't, I didn't see the movie. The whole thing is that Anthony Hopkins is 83 and he's being an actor. But I mean, like, the dedication that Chadwick Boseman, you went through how many epic movies with cancer and no one knew? Sure. That was the snub of the century, okay? So forget. I'm mad at Anthony Hopkins, and he probably got nothing to do with it. <laughs> Total snub, man. I wasn't feeling that at all. But um, as far as the uh, the black community is concerned, but um, Daniel uh, uh Kule has won uh best supporting actor for his role as, as Craig Hampton in Judas of the Black Messiah. So that was good. That was good. And then also um. Of course, um, my latest favorite um, Pixar movie, uh, Soul, won Best Animated Feature. So that is, that was not no, that was not even a discussion there. We already knew that uh, Soul was going to win. That's Can I say something about Soul? Just my opinion. When I saw the movie, I felt like the only thing, I feel like it missed something. It, you know, I missed something, but they won. It was all good. <laughs> So yeah, um, <laughs> you didn't like. That. <laughs> he was like, "You don't think so?" But anyways, okay, you're right. Um, I like the movie because like um, like this is the first time like they had a, um a black lead for uh, a Pixar film. Like it focused a lot on mm -hmm. on jazz music, which was pretty good. And Ooh. yeah, so I, I like the I like the concept of the movie because I, I think that was one of Dizzy's best of last year. What else can we say? That, uh, we, were you saying something else about the Oscars? Yeah, um, yeah, like uh, last words, like it wasn't that, um, wasn't that great, but um, we'll see when by uh, next year, when they actually go back to the, um, to the, um, to the original, theatrical place that they know me that I do the Oscar. So it might be, we'll see what, if it does better next year. But, but as far as the, uh, the viewership and, um, and actually having people back in the, at the original theater. Mr. I, yeah, I think that's, <laughs> that's okay. Yes, the theater was bootleg to me. I think that they, a lot of people were saying like, oh, it's so old cinema. Like, 
you got screens up on these bars. Like, I don't see no old cinema about it. The tables was round and it was in a cascading motion and a cascading step. Like, I just didn't, I think it looked cheap. People tell me, I, I was bored to death. Um, there was nothing interesting. I think we picked at things. I think we didn't highlight things that needed to be. Um, I think they were safe. Um, Anthony, yes. Um, Nomad won against Chicago 7 and Judas and the Black Messiah. Regardless, okay, Judas and the Black Messiah, they did good. They did good. I don't but the Chicago 7, you know who should have won that best one? Was uh, this guy, the comedian from Chicago 7, Borat. Oh, yeah. Uh, I definitely um, yeah, I love that mo- I love that movie, too. And um, speaking of, like, um, even though, like, half of my mom's uh, side of the family from Chicago, like, I even knew, like, uh, mm. this happened back then. Like, this, to- this definitely gave me some knowledge of, of, like, from that movie. Like, it was great. It definitely- okay. Like, who... I just, where are these movies sometimes? I don't know where these movies come from, and I didn't, but some some of these movies come out of nowhere and get an award during the award ceremony just in time. And it's like, we get it. There's a lot of money involved. <laughs> yeah, because like, if you think about it, like like during the, um, this are the Oscar, Oscar words. Like if you have your movie, like that's either between um, like the summer going into like, to like to February, then you had the like the potential of getting that um Oscar category uh, nomination. And um and speaking about it, like Netflix, uh, uh we've been seeing it like for two for two years now. Netflix has been dominating the Oscars like for right now. And I uh, you see most of all most of the, all the films were like Netflix's movies. Most of the films. Mm, yeah, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah, it was. Um, I think that, um, I guess, yes, they were um, with Netflix. I think they were snubbed a little bit too. I guess they had great movies. Um, but you know who did great? HBO, mm-hmm. Warner Media. <laughs> so, uh, uh, <laughs> At least Tenet won something. We got 11 Academy Awards. So, um, go HBO, go HBO. Yeah, at least Tenet won something. I was mad that it did not get Best Picture nominations, which is dumb, but I'm glad it won something. Because sometimes these movies sweep, right? But I feel like, okay, if I must speak freely, this is supposed to be the most diverse Oscars that there was. Great, heard. The Asian community had a a great uh, outstanding awards at that time, right? Now we talk about diversity. Thing that we fight on is a watered down version of Black Lives Matter. You know what I'm saying? It's a like what I, I get it. Oh, this year is about diversity, and I, I the, the most diverse crowd. Yes, we're getting their meat, and I, I I like that there's more representation. But I think sometimes there's sweeps when there's sweeps, and um, film will get. Seven kind of nights, blah, blah blah blah, and you'll say like, oh, okay, yeah, I get it. It moved me, you know. But when it comes time to like black films, you won't see a, a, a diverse film, you know. If you won't see a sweep, but you know, uh, we're getting there. Yeah, that's why we got the uh, the N uh, double A N C P for life for uh, for life for black filmmakers. That's why we got that. That's our black Oscars, if you could say. Mm-hmm. Did you like it? Okay. But yeah, uh, we hope that next year's Oscars will be better next year. But um, uh, moving on, so well with the two versus battle. Uh, last uh, in the last couple of episodes, we talked about um, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and um, the IZ Brothers. So yeah. with everything like in the rounds that they did, so IZ Brothers. One, uh, 16 to 10 with a four tie in the rounds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, uh, personally, I think uh, uh, the Ice Buzz definitely did um, win most of the rounds. Uh, don't get me wrong, Earth, Wind, and Fire bringing some of that uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire uh, to, to certain songs, but um, 
it was very too close to call. But um, the uh, the Izzy Buzz uh, definitely um won those uh, won those rounds. So what do you think? I think it's a that um for me i love specific earth wind and fire and Isley brothers songs especially because i'm an 80s baby so I'm, i love that r kelly mixed with the Isley brothers um i didn't um i think the audience had the winning hand i think it was moving i think it was special i think it was special you know what i'm saying i think it was just a a dedication of black families, black spirit, black excellence. And it was just so nice to see ooh, like real musicians in a real time that really contributed <laughs> to the community and black excellence. Um, so many different types of spirits, you know, the ones that we forget about that, like, you know, I think when people forget about um Black excellence is like, oh, there was always a rise from poor to riches. No, there's always been Black excellence. And that's why it's Black excellence. And that's what we're talking about, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and the Isis brothers. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't never see them doing no extra. The representation is so classy. It's so um, uplifting. So I just think that I liked it um, because it was a time, uh, 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 an event that you could just lay back and then really have Easter Sunday dinner. And has so and you could just talk, probably even call your cousins and stuff like that. So. Yeah, and then on <laughs> of course, and then on full twenty, we had Method Man versus Red Man in the battle of the uh the Wu Tang. So this was not even a, this was too close to call because like how can you bet on a on a winner, man? Like these two are a dynamic duo. Like how can you bet on that? Like this is too close to call for me. What like, what do you think? This was too close. Which one against me? The 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 the, the verses or the spe- the what's yeah, yeah the verses right? this happened on on four twenty. Oh this yeah. is like okay, yeah. This is like I think they outdone this. So I think this is will never be done, you know, is that you just sit back and enjoy the battle. Ashanti and came in, um Keisha Cole was kind of like that for me because of my spirit. And I think that's what verses that I have a friend. Um, and she's a coworker and she's so cute. She's like, how long have they been doing this? Like everyone should do this. And it's like, for real, like, I'd love to see, uh, I don't know, Nelly Furtado against, uh, or, oh, I don't know who Alicia Keys would play against. Alicia Keys against Mariah Carey or something. Like, just, ooh, I can't wait. It's a, versus is such a great, like, I think, uh, they were talking about the next one, right? Being about Red Man and Method Man. What do you think about that one? Yeah, that just happened on on four twenty. Is that this is fast happened on four twenty? Oh, mm. <coughs> I haven't seen that one, man. Damn, I have to catch up. <laughs> I was just gonna say it must have been interesting. It happened on four twenty. Where is the what versus? Is there a versus magazine? I'm not getting. I'm always a day behind these versus battles. A week behind. Yeah, but um, I saw that and I was like, that was just too close to call for me. Mm-hmm. I can't pick a winner for that one. Because they like the Diamond Hand duo. That's what I'm saying. They were For me, I wanted, wanted you to, Wu-Tang Clan against um, Digital Underground. You know what I'm saying? When you have that vast, both vast dynamic of rappers just killing it, just like the Izzy Brothers, you know? And the Red Man Method Man. I like, I like that contrast, but in some way they're just so different, right? Like Method Man speaks to my common soul, uh, like that common the rapper, um, my Eric Badu soul, you know, where Red Man talks to my ludicrous soul, my get high, uh, party up anthem DMX song <laughs> kind of vibe. So I, uh, I, I, I'm gonna check it out. I'll let you know, man. We could we'll do the episode again. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and uh, speaking of dear match, um, they just had the homecoming uh, celebration and also the funeral service uh, that this past week. And um, in the light of um, this is what uh, Yahoo uh, mentioned in an article. So, in the light of the recent death of the beloved New York rapper Earl Dear Diamant Simmons, his home state has decided to set a day aside to honor his life and legacy. According to Fathom, New York State Senate declared December 18th as DMS Day, which makes perfect sense 
as it includes with the late artist's birthday. This, de this declarance was announced during the rapper's private homegoing ce celebration on Sunday by community actors Edgar Ford and Priscilla Anochi. Uh, so I think this will be, this is going to be great. So like, and um, uh, did you get a chance to see the um, the homegoing uh, celebration and the, um, uh, the that happened on YouTube? And then they had the uh, actual funeral service on on BET. Uh, do you ever did catch those uh, two events? Mm -hmm. uh, um, mm -hmm. Sorry, no. I, uh, uh, sorry, no. I mean, it was into like um during the homecoming, like they had the big um the big monster truck, and then you had um the the, the cast is like uh, behind the um like in the um in the truck, and like, like uh, you can see like that DMS cast is like uh, they had a good ride, at the, and then on the side they say uh, long live DMS, and they had the big uh, monster truck. Oh my god, I'm so silly. Okay, listen, I I haven't seen that event. I didn't see the funeral. Um, I know that they're gonna have DMX day. I know DMX birthday was, I mean, uh, day he passed away was really sad, <laughs> but his birthday is December 18th, yeah, I think yeah, it is. 18th, and then uh, they declared that's gonna be DMX day. Yeah, it should be his birthday, you know, um, because we shouldn't celebrate his death. And oh, well, you know, you, you should you saw my Facebook live, it was like, uh, you know, it is like a party you die. It's like, okay, when Michael Jackson passed away, it wasn't like, I, I was like, mm, that sucks, poor guy, you know? Um, but like sad. And then um, like some other artists, but this one else, it, he has so much of a struggle. He has so much of a, issues and he touched my mental health spirit. You know what I'm saying? New York better making it next day. DMX day, that sounds good. That's the song. Yeah. Yeah. The show. Yeah. And speaking of that, um, there are there's a potential news that uh, we might see a, a DMX biopic. And there's two um, two actors, potential actors to the play. One is um, uh, Mika Brooks, who was uh, who was that uh, the guy who played Jax in um, in Mortal Kombat, and then, mm -hmm. uh, and then also. Um, Michael uh, uh, Keith Williams, uh, he was in um, Brooklyn's Finest, uh, Love Cat Country, and um, yeah, what what else he, uh, he was? What, who was? Oh, Love Cat Country. Who he was the name of the actor? He was um yeah he played as the father. Uh, my let me. Oh yes, oh yes. Oh, oh my God, they want to play him as the bio kid pick for DMX. Who oh, man? Okay. The, the being that guy has his own personality. Hold up, please. Yeah, yeah, I know which one you're talking about. It's just, damn, that'd be a dynamic ass movie. I hope Lifetime don't pick it up. I'm a bunch no, of Lifetime no, in the face. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. If they do that, I swear I'm kidding. I am writing a letter. I'm like, we coming up there to show. No. Oh, my goodness. No. Don't you get, I don't. What like that to do that here? No. Don't do that. Though. No. That's all I'm saying. No. Hell to the nine. But yeah, so that that's uh two uh two potential actors that might play DMS in um in a in a biopic. Yeah, that's cute. I like that. I like both of them very much. Uh, I think they're extraordinary actors. They're just so good themselves that, you know, you don't want them to be about the actor. You want it to be about DMX. So. Yeah. It, it would be a great challenge. The, the writing would be great. The, and they, it'd have to be a Warner Brothers media. <laughs> it had to be. <laughs> yeah. Please uh, pick it up. Make it a, um, a HBO Max um, original. Make it a, or a Netflix Max. Prime video. Uh, like, yeah, one of those, pick them up. Yeah, but okay. But just don't let Lifetime get it, please don't. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> or Hallmark. <laughs> Plus, I'm cool with it. Like, I, uh, yeah, I'm cool with it. But just don't have Lifetime pick it up. That's all I'm saying. Oh my God, like for real. But um, uh, moving on to some boxy news. So we finally, after a few delays, 
uh, we are finally getting that special uh, expedition um, uh, match with um, Floyd Money Mayweather Jr. versus Logan uh, YouTube Sessions Logan Paul on June 6th at the Hard Rock Dolphin Stadium in Miami Gardens. So I have two, I have two questions regarding this match. One, can Logan Paul hang with um, Floyd? And two, how long can he uh, can he go for? It? So we already know his brother Jake is doing uh, crazy down at with the last two fights uh, that he had. So um, and uh, and then with Logan being at at, uh, at WrestleMania season uh, last year. Now, and then also, which was at the last uh, UFC event, like going crazy all of a sudden. And now you got him going in a special exposition match with, uh, with, Man- with Mayweather. So, what are your thoughts on that? I think I hope Logan whoop his ass. <laughs> oh, so you're going with the other dog. That's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. <laughs> Is that no, yeah, I'm going for Logan. Yeah, hell yeah. I always go for the underdog, man. Even though we all know this is a whole setup because it's money made, whether it's probably a t- t- uh, money, team money management productions, and it's going to be all over and they're going to have bad bitches and shit. But listen up, people, don't let them fool you. <laughs> um, just put your money on Mayweather. Because um, I, I, we're just going to be. And then, uh, and then it's like round and it's done. And we see the punches are, like, it's so sad. I wish Logan whoop his ass, just, just flip the fuck out and just pop, pop, whoop, whoop, poop, poop, and just, just hurt him. And then be like, don't play with me and spit on <laughs> We gonna see, <laughs> uh, uh, listen, listen. If Logan wins, <laughs> if Logan wins, what do you want? Ooh, oh, 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 okay. If Logan wins. I want a sewing machine. <laughs> About that life. What you need? What you want? Come on. It's on the table now. All right. A sewing machine, huh? What do you want if Mayweather wins? Because you, th- I guess you're going for Mayweather, right? Yeah. And if Mayweather wins, mm-hmm. you're not going to get a PlayStation 5. A uh, PlayStation 5? Nah, where, I'm playing Where do you think we at? Where? where? <laughs> you're not crazy. <laughs> where? I'm playing, I'm playing. I ain't never, child. Woo! <laughs> nah, 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 nah. nah I, um, I'll go you a little bit, a little lighter. Um, you have to give me, um, buy me a GoPro. A GoPro. A go kart. A GoPro. GoPro. A GoPro. Which one? The little, the simple. What? Uh, uh-uh, I see. Mm-mm, mm-mm. This is too rich for my blood. I already told you I'm not betting on. <laughs> Look, well, I trade your computer for my computer. <laughs> He's like, man, what I look like. <laughs> But okay, how about twenty bucks? Fair wager. Okay, twenty bucks is good. Deal. Yeah. Shake on it. Shake on it. No, you gotta, you gotta shake on it. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> We're good on it. But um, yeah. Even though, like, to be honest, I thought this was this was going to take place in um in Vegas because like. Oh, most of Mayweather's matchup was going to be in Vegas, but I'm surprised it's coming here. Uh, um, and I want to see how the ticket sale is going to be because um, if you uh, uh, normally if you buy this like on like on a pay per view like they have the website now like uh, it's going to be like fifty dollars for um uh, for the for, for the pay per view. But um, I hope this is this is just don't be like Mayweather and Paul. If I uh, I hope they bring in some more. Uh, matches uh, to it just to kind of hype up uh, um, uh, the 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 event, but um, like well, like what do you think about it? I think that I like the idea that it's over here. You know what I'm saying? Because the South is popping. You know what I'm saying? Like 
Florida has always been a very uh, gambling state. Huh? You know, you there's a casino everywhere in South Florida. So I'm about that life. Bring it. You know, um, I, we have events here in Georgia all the time. Bring a lot of money to the South. Um, and I think we cater better <laughs> than the West, where all that money was going, California and Nevada. So... Bring it, baby. I think it's going to be dope. I think that I don't know where they're going to put it at Hard Rock Stadium because I thought it was just a football stadium. But, he's, oh, they might just – is it going to be outside? No, it's a dome, right? Okay, so. Because no, um, they have the um, the open uh, thing. Man, because I don't want to – I love it. Um, I like the idea. Um, Miami Gardens is a nice little area. Um, what else? I like the idea. They need to bring it over here to Mercedes, but nah, we had hella traffic. I won't even be able to get in work. <laughs> Last time we had the All-Stars over here at the Mercedes Benz. I couldn't even, I couldn't even been on the same street. It took me an hour, like two hours to get to work. I was already like in the street for an hour. But anyways, I say yes. Um, ting ting, ting ting, Las Vegas. <laughs> Oh yeah, so it's in uh, th thirty-seven days. So um, are you gonna be watching this uh, uh, for all my Miami people out here? Are y'all gonna watch that at home, or y'all gonna go out to the to, to the Hard Rock Stadium? Ooh, or the show, go to a bar, have some fun, put your money into these communities that needed money since the pandemic had happened. You know, so let's you know let's get social, let's stay protected, let's stay clean. Now listen, people. <laughs> If we go out to these sporting events, don't discriminate discriminate just discriminate against people who have not gotten the vaccine, no vaccine passport. Keep your mask on. I know it's uncomfortable, and I want to look cute too. You know, wear a matching mask. Um, just stay protected. Watch your kids. Watch your seniors. Watch each other, and be safe. Don't discriminate on un unvaccinated people. They got a mask on, okay? That's it. But it is, when is the um, fight? On uh, June 6th. June 6th. Okay, okay. Money made well, the fight. I Pay-per-view. I hope I'm watching it. I watched the other fight with Tyson and uh, Holyfield. Yeah. Yeah, it was whack, so... <laughs> somebody better got my something um they make it's funny it, they make i think they make a lot of money in their gambling and oh i think miami is allowing a lot more gaming uh of uh betting now um they're trying to get georgia to do that you know georgia is a, a no gambling state they have like these little machines and gas stations yes but it's really nice mayweather fight Yeah, so um, that's going to be very interesting. But um, uh, moving on to uh, some boxing news, to uh, to some comic book and some convention news. So um, last year we had the DC fandom, which turned out really great. So um, we it turned out so great that we have it again in October. So this is what movie or web uh, state the following. The second DC fandom event will take place on Saturday, October 16th. Mark your calendars, DC fans. Request a day off from work if necessary. Do whatever you need to do to join us on October 16th, 2021, because you are not gonna want to miss it. DC said in its announcement, no further details were revealed at this time. A brief teaser was released along with the announcement, set to iconic Superman theme music. Beyond that, it remains to be seen what DC has planned for their second installment. But with quite a few DC projects coming down the pipeline over the next few years, it could be proved to be a huge day for fans. Sir. Sure. So with that in mind, um, for next year's uh, DC films, like we already know that we are getting um, Robert Pattinson's Batman. Um, we are getting uh, the Flash movie. Uh, what else? We are uh, getting uh, the the Rock's um, Black Adam, and uh, in the movie, and 
hope to uh, uh, get into more of what DC has planned, not only um, but, but for movies, uh, TV series, and also um, uh, video games they have planned, like um, all the, uh, the teasers that it might have been shown from the first um, DC fandom might have a, uh, another preview trailer for the second um, for the second installment, and then we might see um, new teachers coming out for uh, like for a future project that might be um, in the development right now. So, um, but but for right now, as far as uh, the DZ project is concerned, um, we are getting uh, James Gunn's um, the Suicide Squad, which is uh, uh, which is coming soon, and then I think that's um, yeah, pretty much it. So, uh, what do you expect to uh, to see from from the DZ fandom this year. The DZ fandom, no, just kidding. <laughs> uh, DZ fandom to me is, um, you know, um, something I think has been killed to death. I guess it would be Suicide Squad, a suicide squad for me. Um, I think that would be the only one that I would absolutely look forward to. Um, I saw the trailer last night, it was pretty okay. I can't complain about it. Um, I would just say that there are thousands of great movies coming out this year and they're fantastic. Um, I mean, have you seen some of these trailers? Like, I want to see those who wish me dead coming out the 14th, Angelina Jolie and like Wrath of Man with John Stamos. I mean, you got Stamos, Nas, you got people like Chris Rock in movies. You got people like Angelina Jolie and James Bond coming out this year. Like, wow. And Jason Statham, ah, oh, like come on, like, uh, but DC Phantom, it's okay. it's okay. Yeah, I am definitely excited. Uh, what's gonna be, but um, the 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 very first installment was um was uh was uh or was vertical where uh well uh, uh, was virtual. Now the question is, is that um for the second installment, will it be the same as the first one, or is there gonna be um? live uh conference and live panels like will, will we actually gonna, gonna see that but um no details has been revealed like i said no re details have been fair yet but uh we might get some news like during the summer like in the coming weeks before october but um i think it still might be virtual it depends on how everything is going on with the vaccines and like and um and everything else but um as far as that um was that to see what's gonna happen and um in the coming weeks uh before October and see uh, what's anything gonna happen. So you think this is gonna stay uh, virtual or you think we might see live panels and live conferences? And uh, you think this is all gonna stay or the live panels and conferences? Yeah. yeah. I think it's still gonna be a mix a little bit. Okay. All right. And then we saved the uh the best uh, we saved the best for last. So last year's summer movies was trash. And like even though some of them might have been uh moved to another date, uh that particular year gone to streaming or they just got delayed and then just throw it off as after next year. But um this year we are finally getting some um some better movies, but um uh without that, but um the studios are taking uh, very much precautions towards uh, how they're gonna re uh, re release the, release their movies. Uh, for example, you already know with um, with Warner Brothers, um, they're gonna re uh, re release their movies day to day with um, in theaters and also HBO Max uh, for, for for thirty days. Um, Disney, some of their uh, some of their titles is gonna be released in um, in theaters. And on Disney Plus, but with, with Premier Access, and there's one particular that's going to be on Disney Plus, but with no, um, with no fees. And then for Universal, it will be in theaters only, but after the 17 day window, it's going to be on on PVOD. And then for uh, for Sony, after it's on 75 day window, it's going to be on uh, Netflix. After that, and then for Lionsgate, it's going to be in theaters only, and then PVOD uh, the, the next month. And then uh, for, for Paramount uh, as well, in theaters only, and then after the, um, their 45 day window, it's gonna be on uh, Paramount Plus. 
So you're excited about watching all of them, right? Because <laughs> I am. <laughs> we got a full stack. Uh, we got a full stack. Oh, like for real, like the Oscars next year are gonna be stupendous. <laughs> and for real, like we're not gonna. I think there's just new movies. They're like, man, so many new movies coming out every week. Like you were saying, I'm sorry to skip ahead like that, but again, Chris Rock, Angelina Jolie has a movie. Uh, we got a James Bond movie coming out this year. This is the year of movies because now, you know, before the movie industry, I think was like, ah, oh, we're not making money. And I almost thought theaters would never open again. I quoted him myself, but they have, um, and they're going to, or in the process of doing so. And so, ah, oh, it's like these movies are so rich. They're so like, kind of, it's like a lot of movies we've been waiting for. Um, that scary movie um, with this girl, um, uh, with things, heard and seen uh, with the girl from uh, Mean Girls. And, and she's really good. Amy was her face, but <sighs> um, man, I think I'm just gonna watch like A plus, like my most expected movies that one for the summer is the Angelina Jolie movie. I don't know. They, that trailer is off. Hey, that was okay. Second one that was on there for me was Monster with um, that John Legend soundtrack. Woo! I love, anyways. <laughs> and there's Nas in the movie, and there's Jennifer Hudson in the freaking movie. Uh, man, 2021 came to fuck it up. <laughs> oh, you know, the, uh, what else? Okay, Spiral. Okay, I have notes here. That's why I keep looking over here, Spiral. It ends with saying it's in the book of of saw it's in the book of saw so spiral is an undercover saw film go see it if you want to but you know your girl don't like no horror movies and i don't know i like chris rocking that ish but i don't like any i'm over saw uh and i, I didn't even watch the fast food trailer i hope that we stop beating things to death because that's what we've been doing. We, we've done that for so those who want me dead, wish me dead. Wrath, a man, monster. All right. Yeah. 2021. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, we're going to go down everything that, that you mentioned. We're going to go down. It starts from, from May 7th all the way down to, uh, to Labor Day. So, um, this is what they have for uh, for May, and then on May seventh, we got the Wrath of the Man, which is uh, with Jason Statham that we just mentioned, uh, Monster with um, uh, Jennifer Hudson, Nas, and uh, ASAP Rocky, who's also going to be in that movie as well. Um, John uh, Davidson Washington, uh, he also going to be in that movie, and um, and that's going to be on Netflix, so so check that out. And then on May fourteenth, uh, Angelina Jolie's movie, uh, Those Who Wish Me Dead. Um, Spiral, The Book of Saw with Chris Rock and Samuel Jackson, and then um, The Woman in the Window, um, another horror flick uh, that's going to be on Netflix, and then May 21st, uh, that's Zack Snyder's big film, uh, Army of the Dead, so um, yeah, they're going to check that out, and then um, another Netflix film, uh, The Blue Miracle on the 27th, and then of course, the Memorial Day weekend. So we all have a clash uh, there. Um, we have a uh, Cruella that's gonna be on in theaters and also on Disney Plus with premium access. And then we got the Quiet Place 2 uh, for Paramount. So after the, that theatrical window is gonna be on, on, on Paramount Plus. So um, uh, what are your thoughts on the May uh, movies for the, for the movies of the month of May? Okay, movies in the month of May. Cruella for sure. Um, a lot of men, uh, women in the, the spiral, I actually would watch it. <laughs> oh, monster and wrath of men next week for sure. Um, I'm looking at it. I'm excited for Cruella just cause you know, I'm a little, her, her, she, I'm very inspired by her hairdo. Um, as you can see it like, but anyways, um, and I want to see this woman um, who's playing her to do this. Like, 
she looks really good in that in that uh, movie. Um, you know what actress I'm talking about? Uh, Emma Stone. She's playing her. I want to see her knock this out. She oh. looks kind of cool so far. Yeah. Oh yeah, she definitely she definitely will. And right. yeah, what's next? Um, for June, we have on June fourth we have the Conjuring three. Um, and then also we have Samaritan with uh, Sylvester Stallone um, from the uh, behind the scenes photos and the storyline. It's kind of like Will Smith's uh, Hancock. That you think about it, like um, so so Sylvester though he been like a, like a homeless man, but but originality he's a he's a superhero. So that's what that movie is about. Um, and then we have Spirited Untamed. Uh, this is Universal uh, and DreamWorks animation film. And then also Vimeo, which is coming out from Netflix, and also the deal they had with Sony. Uh, and then it's going to be a Sony a animation flick for that one. And then on June 9th, we have another horror flick in a, in a week from Netflix. And then June 11th, this is going to be uh, an interesting movie. Uh, in the Heights. So if you haven't seen Hamilton, <laughs> watch that movie first before you watch um, In the Heights. So that's going to be another dancing flick. That, that I had to check out. And then um, another Netflix and Sony animation um, uh, flick, uh, Wish the Dragon. And then on June 16th, we have the sequel to Hitman's Bodyguard with Hitman's wife bodyguard. So that's going to be very interesting. And then on June 18th, we have another Pixar flick with Luca. So uh, trust me, once you see that movie, you're going to be wanting to go to Italy. And then. Okay. <laughs> we, got, we got Peter Rabbit 2 uh -huh. I'm like this movie should have came out on Easter but it's going to be on June so what you can do and then mm -hmm. um, we got Kevin Hart's new movie uh, the Fatherhood that's going to be on Netflix and then on June 25th we have the Fast and Furious 9 and it's finally going to happen and then uh, another movie on Netflix is going to be uh, Ice, the Ice Road with uh, Liam Neeson, so it's going to be another action flick. And then on June 30th, we have America, the motion picture flick. And then you hear um, Abraham Lincoln um, uh, voiced by uh, freaking uh, Channing Tatum. Uh, that's going to be very interesting. But um, uh, what do you think on the June movies? June movies, definitely in the heights. It's a Warner Brothers, HBO Max uh, production. <laughs> I, it's about my heritage, you know, where my mother came from, where my father came from. You know, they were both, um, my parents are from Brooklyn and and some of the Bronx cousins. Um, and they grew up, um, which is the storyline of the Heights and how we come here. And it's very rent, uh, it's very musical. And so that's definitely my summer pick. Um, Definitely Luca. <laughs> Luca, I was like, man, I need to go to Europe now. <laughs> um, I would love to see Kevin Hart again, see if he's making it, because he, he's drying up for me. Um, America the Motion Picture. Mm. I think uh, for the, the America the Motion Picture, I, mean, I guess it wanted to come out the 4th of July weekend. So, but um, it's got some more hints. So, would you like me to read July? All uh, right, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so July 2nd um, through the 4th, on the 4th of July weekend, we have The Forever Purge by Universal. Um, also, uh, that weekend, we got Tomorrow War, Amazon Prime Videos. July 9th, we have Black Widow, Disney, Disney Plus, um, and available on HBO Max, Warner Brothers on July 16th, would be Space Jam 2 with LeBron James. We got Escape Room from Sony with Cinderella as well that uh, weekend and The Night House by Searchlight Entertainment. Um, the 21st, they have Troll Hunters Rise of the Titans on Netflix. And on the 23rd weekend um, release, we have Hotel Transylvania 4, which is called Trans. Transform Mania <laughs> by Sony, Snake Eyes by Paramount, and Old by Universal. And the July 29th, following that, will be Resort of Love, 
by Netflix and July 30th, it will be four more movies, uh, Jungle Cruise by Disney. We got an A24 production. Their movies are so dope, which is The Green Knight. Um, Netflix has a feature, The Last Mercenary. And Focus Features has Stillwater. What are you thinking about July? So the July is going to be is interesting because because starting off with the Fourth of July weekend, you got the uh you got the uh, another purge that's going to be happening, and then you got Tomorrow War, where, which is um a Chris Pratt's uh, new movie. Um, we're finally getting Black Widow in theaters on July 9th and on Disney Plus for those who want to stay home and watch it, and then of course um Juicy T, uh, we already talked about Space Jam coming out, um, Escape Room. So um. If you guys already been to Escape Room attraction like in uh, like Orlando, if you've seen like the very first one, a horror movie, you get why, where we're going from there. And then I don't know what's up these Cinderella adaptations. Like, there's only one that okay, that's Disney alive. So stop playing with these freaking adaptations. This is too much. And then um, Night House, that's another horror flick that's gonna be happening. And then Trolls Hunter, um, this was originally a Netflix original, but they adopted. Um, to, to, to make a, uh, a feature film from Gil Gattaro. So that's going to be interesting. And then another um, Hotel Tr Transylvania with Adam Sandler and the crew. Um, so I already knew there was going to be a fourth point after what happened um, at the end of the third one. And then we finally gained Snake Eyes, GF of G.I. Joe. And then, oh, this is very interesting. When I further saw the first trailer for that, it was like, these people go on a vacation on a desert island somewhere. And then that desert island make you grow old. So that's gonna be a, like a horror flick. So like, if you guys, oh. yeah, <laughs> like it's very- it sounded like a horror flick. I said old. Yeah, that's- Yeah, that sounds scary. <laughs> yeah, it sounds scary and it sounds weird, but it feel like a good concept from um, M. Night's uh, Shovel On, so- Oh, no, no, don't believe in that, man. <laughs> Don't believe in that, man. I can't stand no M. Night Shyamalan movies. It's going to be a totally different ending that you ever even went in for. Probably not even a horror movie. Listen, listen. It's a good concept. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, my God. And then, of course, we're live. We've been on Netflix. And then, um, Jungle Cruise. And then, Jungle Cruise. Yeah. Hi. Sorry. There yeah, and then um, Jungle Cruise uh, with the with the rock in there. Of course, um, this movie is based on the uh, the ride attraction that uh, from from Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World. So we finally get that movie as well. But um, this might be a potential that it might be a day to day release for theaters and Disney Plus um, uh, premium access. But they haven't jumped the gun yet. But we'll see what's that's gonna happen. And then Still Water for both of like we just mentioned. We finally green green night. I wanted to see this movie last year, but it got pushed back to this year, and we finally gonna get it. And then the last mercenary, that's with John Claude Van Damme. I like I ain't seen this man in a movie in a while. So we he <laughs> a movie on, on Netflix. So that's my thought on on July. And then last we got for August, we have the Sir James Gunn Suicide Squad on April 6th. And then April 11th, then this is going to be the finale, uh, The Kissing Booth 3. And then August 13th, we have Ryan Warren's newest flick for a free guy, finally going to come out this year. And then R-E-S-P-C-T, find what it means to me, R-E-S-P-C-T. Jennifer Hudson uh, coming out with uh, Respect, uh, Aretha Franklin, uh, August 13th as well. And then Another horror flick uh, sequel coming for Don't Breathe 2. That's going to happen. And then uh, Paw Patrol. This is going to be interesting. So I got to show Bree. Um, that, <laughs> so you can check out with, with the dogs with the firefighters. I gotta, you gotta check, she got to check out that movie. And then um, Files. So that's a, um, that's a Tom Hanks movie. So that's going to be very interesting. And then, and then Sweet Girl from Netflix. So this is from... Um, uh, Jason Momoa, so that's going to be another action flick. And then uh, August 27th, Reminis from um, from Hugh Jackman. Uh, that's going to be, that movie takes place in a, um, a sci-fi sci um, future movie, like in like in the 2032 in Miami. So that's going to be very interesting. And then 
Kenny, 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 Kenny. You're lucky I ain't say it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you know you're right. I like it. <laughs> and then that's gonna finally go to um. This Kenny man's a true story, y'all. Yeah, and then uh, from from Jordan Peele. So um, this finally gonna happen on June, uh, August 27th. Um, Benick from the right. Netflix, and then he is all that from Netflix as well. So and then uh, what are your thoughts on the August uh movies? August. Man, I wish Candyman's would have came out for Halloween. Like they, I wish they would have waited. You know what I'm saying? Um, the Kissing Booth Three. Dear Jesus, do we need another one? <laughs> their final one. Final. <laughs> Suicide Squad. As is, yeah, I liked Suicide Squad. I saw their trailer. It was doing. Um, okay, and then Sweet Girl. But and Candy. I think Candyman's my top pick, but. We will see, you know, I like jumping around a lot. Reminiscence will probably be the dopest. And what do we got for September? And then lastly, um, Legends of the Ten Rings. On Labor Day weekend, we got Shane Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Another, Mar another Marvel flick. So this is, uh, if, you don't, if you guys don't know what Shane Chi is, so Shane Chi is like Marvel's version of Bruce Lee. Mm. I like that. I like that. You know, Bruce Lee is a, a hard guy to follow up. Yeah, absolutely sweet. I think he's gonna I think that would be a great movie to look forward to. So yeah, uh that's our list of summer movies that's gonna be coming out this year. Uh, let us know in the comments uh which ones are you most uh, most excited for and uh what are you pl planning to, to see any of these movies are in the theaters or are you just gonna sit back and wait and watch these movies on the yeah, on, on your couch at uh, at home? But um mm -hmm. that's our, all of our topics for today. So uh if you're watching this on YouTube, let us leave us a comment down below. And let us know your thoughts on everything that we just uh, talked about. And then, of course, if you're listening on Anchor, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, uh, the link of the YouTube uh, video is going to be in the description and post your comments there on YouTube. Absolutely. We look forward to your comments because we get things popping up in here. <laughs> All right. And then, um, and don't forget to follow us on uh, our social media as well. But um, she is tied. And I'm Trico, and we're now two fingers, deuce. <laughs>